Hello everybody, this is Gary and last night my wife brought back a bag of aprums which gave me an idea to do a video on some of the hybrids that we have in the genus Prunus. Now the genus Prunus includes things like cherries, apricots, nectarines, peaches, etc. And these are what we call stone fruits. And she brought this home last night, a bag of what we call aprums. And an aprum is a hybrid between a plum and an apricot. And they're called um, interspecific crosses. And um, they can cross these because they're closely related enough for them to be able to um, produce a fruit. You can't cross, say, an apple, which is in, it's a palm fruit, uh, with, say, a um, stone fruit, uh, which produces a, a botanical fruit called a droop. You can't cross those two. They're not closely related enough. Now, you can graft with great difficulty, but you can graft a pear onto an apple or an apple onto a pear. I've seen it done by a forester here in the Lansing area. Uh, and you've probably heard of these fruit cocktail trees where they group them together. Because all of these fruits are in the rose family, and if you're careful and, you, and you're pretty good at it, you might be able to get it to work. Now, um, <clears throat> these are created by specific cross, uh, crosses between the various fruits, and they're hand pollinated. They're, gen they're not genetically engineered in the sense of what most people think of them, like using the CRISPR sy system. This is genetic modification the old way, where they're actually crossing different fruits using uh, pollen from one fruit, to the, uh, to the um, stigma of the female flower of the other fruit. Now, um, so, as I said, aprums are a cross between um, apricots and plums. And uh, this one I tried last night. I don't know the cultivar name because when you buy them in the stores, they don't tell you what they are. But this one is more like a plum, both in size and appearance. And you'll find that uh, many times these crosses are much sweeter than either of the parents. So that's one of the things that people like about them. Depending on how they cross them, they take down the characteristics of one or the other parent or both. Now this fruit here and this fruit here and this fruit here are all what we call plum cots. And a plum cot is a cross also between uh, apricot and plum, but it's a first generation cross. So you cross one parent with the other, and then the progeny is called the F1 generation, and that's what plum cots are. This particular one is a pluot, and uh, a pluot is also a cross, but it tends to be the genetics of the plum that dominate this particular species. The sugar content is much higher than you would normally find in the parents, which might be plums, peaches, or apricots. And there are literally hundreds of cultivars out there in the trade right now. But the problem is, in the grocery stores, many times they just label them as plums. For instance, this one, this plum cot, um, it was labeled as a plum, and I bought this at Kroger. And it's called Tropical Sunrise. But they didn't list it as Tropical Sunrise, they just listed it as a, a plum cot. And sometimes they don't even do that, they'll list them as just plums. It depends on the store. I think that's kind of a mistake because what I would do is I would really push like, here's something new you might want to try. Most people uh, aren't that attracted to plums, but when you start saying, hey, we have something new here, some crosses, you might want to try it. I think that it might uh, get some people interested. But um, then we have April plums, and these are first generation plum apricot hybrids, and they tend to favor the characteristics of the apricot this time. And there are other mixtures also. There is a nectar plum, which is a cross between a nectarine and a plum. There's also a peachicot, and then there's a pluary. A uh, pluary is a hybrid between cherry and the plum. So there's some interesting mixtures out there. And um, the other thing I wanted to mention is that you can't grow these anywhere in the United States. Uh, some of them are in zone six and we're talking about California and some of the warmer places. 
uh, I'll probably have to do a uh, video later on some of the different varieties which ones might grow in a colder climate but uh, many of them aren't accessible to people uh, in colder climates and uh, they tend to bloom fairly early and apricots already bloom in late April and many times in Michigan they get hit with a late frost unless you protect them. Uh, I have a video on that uh, which didn't work out too well but anyway um, so you would have damage on a lot of years if they weren't protected. So that's what I wanted to tell you today and uh, first of all we're going to do a little tasting and see how they are. So the first one I want to taste is going to be this little guy, the uh, Dapel Dandy Plua. Seems kind of firm. As you can see the flesh is kind of um, white as it says, a little red. Let's try it. Here we go. A little bit on the tart side. Now if this uh, fruit was allowed to ripen on the tree and say for instance you bought it at a farmer's market or at the farmer's market at the farm itself, I'm sure this would be pretty good. Um, but What I would tell you is that the tartness would be great if I was baking with this. Like if I was making a plum crisp or something like that. I like the texture, but just under the skin, woo, it's tart. Not bad though, I like it. Okay, so the next one I'm going to try is the uh, Tropical Sunrise Plu Out. This is the one that's supposed to have undertaste of mango. Of course, I would assume that if it was allowed to ripen fully, uh, it would be really nice, but we'll see how it, how it is. As you can see, it's a yellow flesh. And uh, let's give this one a try. We're picking these things too soon. I'm not tasting mango. I'm tasting fruit that should have stayed on the tree longer. If I put this in a lunchbox of my child, or some child, they're gonna throw it away. Okay, so the next one I'm gonna try is the Pluot that came in the bag. It's kind of a reddish one, as you can see here. Softer, so that tells me it's uh, more ripe. Uh, nice deep red flesh, as you can see here. All of these seem to have a tartness right under the skin. The sweetness is in the flesh. Um, this one is much ju juicier. Uh, it is sweeter, but I wouldn't say super sweet. That tartness right under the skin is really something. It kind of puckers you up a little bit. But I don't mind that because as a cook, I can use that. Uh, that will give me some nice flavor, especially if I'm reducing that fruit down. Now this next one, I call this Fruit X because uh, they listed it as a plum, a red plum. But based on the size, because this is a red plum too, based on its size and the way it looks, it looks like it's a cross, but they just labeled it as a plum. So I call it Fruit X and I'm going to try these two next to each other, the red plum and what I call Fruit X. They both look fairly similar inside. The, the larger one has some bruising on it. That's what you have to watch out for because people rummage through the fruit. And uh, the flesh color is similar. I'm going to try the regular red plum first. A little tartness, but not too much. It's not puckery tartness. A little less sweetness, but I like it. Now we're going to try Fruit X. They're similar. Uh, Fruit X <laughs> It's a little sweeter. Um, I like the balance of sweet and tartness. It's a firm flesh. I tend to like a little firmer plum than I do really mushy ones. Uh, but as they get more ripe, they tend to get a little softer, but they are sweeter. So. Overall, um, 
they're quite interesting. I think most of these I would probably cook with first than eating just out of hand simply because, <clears throat> excuse me, they're not fully ripe. But that may not always be the case. It depends on where you are. If you are closer to the source where they're being grown, where they're not being shipped across the country because many of these are coming out of California, then you're probably getting better quality than what I'm getting here in Michigan because uh, shipping something that's soft is not going to do very well, especially on Michigan roads. So, so anyway, these are great, and uh, I think the Aprum was the one that I liked the best. I didn't, I didn't try the Aprum uh, today because I tried it last night, but maybe I'll just try a little bit, see if I still like it. It might have just been the one I got. Nope. This Aprum is sweet. It's the sweetest one of the bunch. Love this one. Still has that underlying tartness. It's a little, the flesh is a little softer, but it's sweet, good flavor. All right, I'm gonna cut all these up and make some kind of dish. And maybe once I decide what it's gonna be, I'll show you. Well, this is Gary, and uh, I'll have another video for you in a few days. See you later.